Over the past few years, there's been a very interesting technology introduced by camera manufacturers called Pixel Shift. Now, Pixel Shift is a method in which the camera will take its IBIS mechanism and utilize that to move the sensor by one pixel increments and capture a sequence of images that can then be composited together to capture a full true color resolution digital image. Now, having a full true color uninterpolated image is very cool. But another very interesting trick that this technology can do is to move the sensor by half pixel increments and take even more pictures in this sequence. And then when all of those are composited together, it effectively quadruples the resolution of the camera. So if you had a 20 megapixel micro four thirds camera, you could take an 80 megapixel photo by compositing all these images. But there is a serious limitation, and that is, if your subject or camera moves while it's taking the sequence of images, and trust me, even the tiniest movement can affect this greatly, it essentially ruins the composited picture because if the subject moves while you're taking all your shots, it just destroys how everything fits together. So in order for this feature to work correctly, you need a perfectly evenly lit, with unchanging light, still subject. And that just happens to describe the exact situation when you're camera scanning. You have a camera pointed at a static, fixed piece of film with a light behind it which is unchanging. So my question is, can we utilize this pixel shift feature to bypass some of the limitations of digital camera scanning and get better scans? Now this question has been sitting rent free in my brain for months now and all of the maths tells me that it should greatly improve our scans. But I need to put my money where my mouth is, so I went out and I rented this. This is a Sony A7R4, currently the highest resolution full frame camera on the market, and it has an effective resolution of 60 megapixels, which honestly for full frame is pretty goddamn insane. However, with the pixel shift feature, this can effectively be amplified and it allows this camera to take uninterpolated, full color, 240 megapixel shots if your subject isn't moving like a piece of film. So now the question is, will this improve our scans? Well, now that I have the camera for a few days, there's only one way to find out. So I'm going to be scanning 35 millimeter, six by six, six by nine, and large format four by five. I'm also going to be scanning black and white, I'm also going to scan some color negative films. So I've got some Portrait 400 and a bunch of other ones like Color Mission as well to scan. And of course, we also need to scan some slide films. So I've got some Ektachrome and Velvia and Provia shots. But in order to scan the film, uh, working with the pixel shift files can be a pain in the ass when you're dealing with SD cards. So I've actually hooked the camera up to my computer so I can trigger it remotely. And that is to reduce any vibrations. And that is because even the tiniest vibration will destroy these pixel shift files. It's actually kind of insane. Uh, I also have a very solid copy stand setup that's as low down as it can get, so it's not flexing at all. And I'm utilizing Sony's remote shooting software. And side note, this software is actually pretty damn good, which is weird because normally Sony software is absolute goddamn garbage. But hey, here we are. So, in order to get the scanning going, I need to turn off the lights, so I'm not casting any, you know, undue light on the film, even though I have a very nice lens hood set up. So, we need to turn off the lights and cue the music and get the scanning. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so let's take a look at these images in Lightroom. So if we take a look at these test images here, these are from the uh, developer test video. I rescanned those negatives. And essentially what I did is I took my original Nikon scans, or in some cases, if I didn't have the original scan, I actually rescanned the negative with a Nikon D780, which is a 24 megapixel sensor. It's the same sensor that's in the A7 III and the Z6 and the Z6 II. Then I also had a one-shot scan, a four-shot pixel shift uh, scan, and a 16-shot pixel shift scan from the Sony a7 IV. And then I took all three of those scans, exported them from the Sony software as TIFFs, and then I compressed those TIFFs down to different resolutions. So I created a 24 megapixel and 47 megapixel copy from that original scan file. So to start off, let's take a look at some scans. So here on the left, we're going to have my 24 megapixel Nikon scan. And then on the right, we're going to have a 24 megapixel scan uh, downscaled from the 16 shot mode. So if we zoom in on these to 100%, uh, you can pretty immediately see the first major difference. And that is that the grain is rendered much better and much more cleanly on the pixel shift files. And this is across the board. Now the reason for that is actually to do with grain aliasing and the Bayer filter. So let's take a look at why that is happening. You might be thinking this grain aliasing issue is the reason why the grain looks so bad, but it actually isn't. The real reason is the Bayer filter that's layered over the top of the sensor. So for anyone who doesn't know, digital cameras can't actually see full color resolution. Instead, what they do is they layer a color filter over all the pixels, so each pixel can only see one color. Now that means that the pixels are split between R, G, and B. So you end up with twice as many green pixels as blue and red. This means that if you're actually taking a digital picture with a camera with a bare filter, which is the majority of them, this particular filter array causes some difficulties. Most notably that when you take a digital shot with a digital camera, you're only recording about 30% of the information. The other 70% is being generated in the demosaicing process, where it essentially tries to fill in the rest of the red pixels to create a full RGB image, and then it combines them together to create a full color image. So to understand how this affects our grain rendering, we need to take a look at it overlaid onto some grain. So the issue here is that these red pixels are only seeing a very small portion of the image. And the camera will naturally try to demosaic this image into full color RGB. Now, in order for this process to work, it has to process each layer separately. But each layer only sees a portion of the film. For the red and blue layers, it only sees 25% of the grains. That means all of the gaps between the red pixels, essentially the camera or your demosaicing software, Lightroom in this case, will actually be guessing what the grain structure is here. So it might go, well, there's some grains here, there's some stuff here. You know, this is rendering as a value of 50, this is a value of 51. So that means this one in the middle is probably going to be 50 as well, and here's 50. So then the camera's going to fill in these blanks with incorrect information, because maybe there's no grains here at all. But the camera can't tell that because it literally can't see them. So then when this red layer is demosaicked, you're going to end up with grains that go like this, and you end up with these kind of worm and blotting effects as the different grain structures end up getting kind of rendered out. And it looks hideous. And we've seen that in the scans. But the real kicker is that this erroring happens in the green layer and in the blue layer independently. And then when you recombine all these images together to create, let's say, a grayscale image for a black and white negative, well, you're going to end up with all the errors from this part of the demosaicing process, this part and this part, all get combined together to create a triple X layering of all of those demosaicing errors. And that's what creates this weird blotting and worming artifacting you can see in the grain rendering. And to back this up, if you look at the original Fuji X trans sensors and how Lightroom used to process those, you were getting the same worming errors because the X trans filter pattern is different from the bare filter pattern. And Lightroom's demosaicing algorithm was causing problems with that 
and rendering poor image quality. So that is why those worms were happening. It was the same process. But in this case, it's the grain pattern that's being rendered because grain is a perfect random noise pattern. Therefore, the demosaicing will introduce errors on each color channel and it introduces all the errors when you flatten everything to a grayscale image. And that's why we're getting those mlotting images. So to get around this issue, we use pixel shift. And the way that works is it essentially scans one photo here, then it moves up by a pixel scan, across, down, and down and it takes four different shots and stitches them all together. That way this red color filter area can see all of these pixels and get the correct values for each one all the way through the grid. The same thing happens with the blue and the green and this eliminates the need for the demosaicing algorithm and therefore the RGB is actually a correct representation of your film grain or I'm not going to say a correct one, a more accurate representation so when you collapse it down that mlotting pattern is greatly reduced to almost eliminated. So now that we've seen how the increased resolution and the bare filter elimination results in a much tighter grain by eliminating errors in interpolation and just errors in grain aliasing as well. And this applies across the board to all of the black and white scans I did. So if we take our you know, 24 megapixel nick on the left and the 24 megapixel 16 shot on the right, we can see that the grain doesn't have that mlotting effect I described. You can actually see it here quite clearly. If we zoom into 200%, you can see how the edges of this are much better defined here on the right, while here they're sort of blotchy and sort of, you know, it looks like, like block, uh, little blotches of grain rather than actual fine points of grain, which is what film is actually compromised of. You can see it in the lines here on the focus chart that the uh, scan on the right is much cleaner and much sharper. Um, if we compare it to the four shot 24 megapixel scan, we can see that the grain is slightly larger in comparison to 16 shot, but honestly, it's such a slight difference, it really doesn't matter. Now, one caveat, and I do need to point this out, is that if you process the pixel shift files using Sony's Imaging Edge software, it renders a horrible, horrible grain on pretty much every film stock. And the reason for this is, for some reason, and this is so typical of Sony, they just crank the sharpness up to 90, and there is no way to turn it off that I can see. So to get around this problem, I actually had to use a different piece of software called Pixel Shift to DNG. It's a free piece of software. I'll link it in the description of the video down below, but you really need to use this Pixel Shift software instead of the Sony software to combine your pixel shifts. But I can show you the effects of the pixel shift kind of over sharpening from Sony software. So to compare, we have the pixel shift to TNG version on the left and the four shot uh, Sony one on the right export from their software. And these are actually exported from the exact same set of files. You can see that the one on the right has significantly higher sharpening. Meanwhile, the one on the left is has much less sharpening applied or basically no sharpening and you can see around the eye we have the same amount of detail in both shots. So if you're going to use the pixel shift feature in the Sony cameras you need to use the uh, third party pixel shift to DNG software. So now that we know that if you see any excessive grain in images you know it's the Sony software creating that not an actual issue with the pixel shift scanning method. So let's take a look at some other black and white scans. This particular one was shot on TMAX P3200 and it's of a deer. So let's compare the four shot uh, pixel shift with the Nikon shot. And we can see that immediately there is quite a big difference between the two. Now, please be aware that the grain is very, very aggressive because of the crazy Sony over sharpening I explained. So, you know, imagine that with less grain but we can see that around the eye, the image is significantly sharper on the right compared to the left. The uh, mlotting effect on the hairs at the back here is quite extreme to the point where it's actually starting to lose some detail in the hairs. Meanwhile, the pixel shift scan on the right is still much, much clearer and just a much better scan overall, apart from that blasted sharpening. Uh, you can see here around the nose, much cleaner lines, just a much better defined scan without the issues of the bare filter and the grain aliasing getting in the way.
Now, I actually do have a black and white scan without the Sony sharpening, which is this particular one here. A close up of might actually be the same deer, but shot on a different day. And this is shot on Delta 400, I believe. So if we zoom in on both of these, we can see that the pixel shift to DNG software has reduced the grain quite considerably. And um, if we look at the eye here, you can see that the eyelashes are much better defined. The grain is honestly not aggressive at all. Like even comparing the two, the grain on the right is a touch more noticeable, but it's a very fine grain compared to like the blotting up here. You can just see it all down along here. It's all just sort of blotchy. You know, on the right, it actually looks like grain. You can see the grain on the Nikon, very aggressive for a 24 megapixel scan compared to the four shot pixel shift scan where it shot a 60 megapixel file and then I downscaled it. I helped melt away some of the grain and produces a really nice image. So now we can take a look at some color shots and to do that we're going to look at this particular shot of the seal and if we compare the pixel shift to DNG version for 24 megapixels, the four shot version and the Nikon original scan uh, we can see that the Nikon scan just gets absolutely obliterated in terms of scan quality. You can see the blotchiness all over the background here and all down along the edge of the seal. Meanwhile, on the pixel shift shot, it just looks way cleaner and the grain is way less aggressive. Now, this particular shot was actually taken on Portra 400, pushed one stop to 800. So... This has some very high grain levels, but you can see that even with that push in development, the scan comes out very, very, very clean on this particular shot with the pixel shift. And the grain is much more aggressive on the Nikon scan. I also think that the, this particular background being, you know, so varied and all the different reflections of the light and all the different shades of blue was actually interfering with the Bayer filter demosaicing process even more and inducing a lot more errors. So let's take a little look at that in depth so we can see how the bare filter affects the color scans even more than the black and white scans. Now the reason the bare filter causes even more problems with color film is because each pixel can only see a portion of each layer. So if you take a look at this red pixel here, okay, it can only see half of the red and blue layer, which is our magenta color, which is made up of red and blue. So it will be emitting some red light and some blue light. But our red pixel is only going to see half of it. It's also going to see half of the yellow layer, okay? So it's going to see some of this and it's going to see some of this. But it's also going to see nothing from the blue layer. Then when you come to the green pixel, it's only going to see here and the yellow, but it's only going to see none of the magenta. And with the blue layer, we have the same problem. It's only going to see some of the cyan layer, some of the magenta layer, and none of the yellow layer. We end up with three times the errors because all of these layers make up the image and we can only photograph portions of it. So essentially the demosaicing process we talked about earlier here with this piece here, the demosaicing process is happening across three different layers of film. The red demosaicing is going to be taking information from the magenta layer and the yellow layer and trying to demosaic that sort of as, as one signal. And then the, the blue you know, channel is going to take information from the cyan layer and the magenta layer and combine that together and demosaic it. But it's also not able to see very much of either layer. So it's end up going to have the demosaicing process is going to cause even more problems and it just becomes a whole goddamn mess. And once again, the pixel shift seems to help with this because if we go back here, we're able to photograph this three times, once for red, once for green, and once for blue across all three sets of pixels. And that way we get a true color representation of the dyes in the film. And thus we end up with a complete color picture of the film. It should provide better color and in theory, a better grain rendering and just better inversion properties as well. So now that we see how the color filter affects the color scanning process, in particular the color negative process, it does help explain to some degree why the Nikon scan looks so much worse than the pixel shift scan. Now I do think the increased resolution is in effect here, but eliminating that bare filter interpolation really does appear to help somewhat as well.
So now we can actually take a look at some other color negative shots. So this particular one is of a flower. And if we zoom in, we can see that for this particular shot, there's actually barely any difference. Like you really, really do have to split your hairs for this one. You know, along the edge of the petals here, you can see a little bit of mulotting in comparison. But honestly, this one is very difficult. You can see a fair bit along here in the background bokeh. Meanwhile, the uh, 16 shot scan is much um, smoother in terms of how it renders the grain. But once again, this was done with the Sony software, so it's going to be way over sharpened in terms of grain. However, you can see that there is quite a difference uh, between the two, but it is still a slight difference. You really do have to split your hairs here. And that is because this was shot on Ektar 100, which is an exceptionally fine grained film. So the actual like grain effect seems to be significantly reduced on the finer grain films. Uh, to take a look at some more, we'll go to this uh, black and white shot here. And we're going to compare the four shot or the 16 shot one here. And um, this one was shot on Delta 400. And as you can see, the mlotting effect all over the duck once again, particularly on these edges and in, in, the, in how the background grain is rendered. Meanwhile, the one on the right just has a nice tight grain structure without this uh, weird artifacting and all around the duck is just kind of much sharper in general. And in my opinion, is a better scan. Uh, here's one of a swan. This particular one was shot on Kodak Gold 200. And you can see again, even with the Sony sharpening, the grain on the right is much tighter. Although I really do wish I had that sharpening turned off or I used the other software for this particular shot. But you can see that the grain rendering is a little bit nicer, I believe, on the one on the right. We've got this particular one here of a fawn uh, being left by its mother in the grass, as they do. And this one's quite interesting because you can see that the Nikon definitely here in the background has some of that blotting effect and artifacting, but it isn't nearly as much. And I'm actually going to put this down to the fact that this was shot on Vision 3 250D, and apparently that film scanned really, really well. So there's not a huge difference here, you know, much less than any of the other color shots. So if we take a look at some slide film scans, we can see that the same effect is here. So on the left, we have my Nikon scan. And on the right, we have the uh, four shot pixel shift scan. And you can see around the edge of the beak here, that same sort of weird blotting effect. Although it is reduced a fair bit on this film. And in case you're wondering, this was shot on Fuji Velvia. But you can even see here on the beak, the texture is kind of funny looking. It has that weird blotchiness. Meanwhile, the one on the right, even with the Sony over sharpening, which I really wish I could turn off, you know, don't think I've mentioned that yet. It looks much, much better, in my opinion, uh, on the right. Uh, there's one particular one here, which is this seagull shot. And this one is very striking. And if we zoom in here, you can actually see that the Nikon scan did not handle this piece of film very well at all. You can see all along here, all the blotchiness. It's just eliminated with the higher res pixel shift scan. And you can see all around the beak is much less blotchy on the beak. It's providing a much smoother overall image. And even in the sky in the background, the difference is very stark between the two. But once again, this has that damn Sony over sharpening. Now you might ask yourself, what happens if we scan a six by six negative? Well, luckily enough, I have one of those in my list here. So if we take a look at this particular 6x6 negative, this was shot um, on Fuji Acros 100. And we can see that between these two, there's actually very, very little difference. I'm going to put that down to the fact that this is a medium format negative. And it's because if you're projecting the same image over a larger area of film, there's more grains for every detail. Therefore, the actual effect of grain aliasing and the bare filter interpolation actually gets reduced down relative to the detail in the photo. But you can see that there is a bit more grain detail showing up on the Sony. But honestly, even between these two, it is very, very slight. You know, there's basically no extra detail being captured. And honestly, it actually looks like the Sony scan might be a tad out of focus now that I look at it a bit more closely. But if we step it up even further, we can actually take a look at some 6x9 slide shots. And here is where things get absolutely crazier. 
and why I think the previous dog shot of the dog was actually out of focus in the Sony scan. And that is because if we compare these to each other, which are almost exactly the same resolution, 24 megapixels each, if we zoom in on these, you can see a crazy amount of extra detail in the pixel shift scan, which has been downscaled. Like just look at these rocks here on both. It's crazy how much more detail there is in the pixel shift. In these trees, you know, it's much cleaner, much sharper. All down along this mountain here is just way, way more detail. Like the scan quality is just absolutely insane on the one on the right for the downscaled image. Like it just looks fantastic in my opinion. Like all this river here, you can see the bank is much better to find, all the grass, all the heather. It just looks so much better with the pixel shift scan. So it does seem to be that there is a point where increasing the resolution along with the negative size absolutely allows you to capture more detail. And for six by nine, it is a clear winner. It also shows that the 60 millimeter macro lens I was using on for both cameras is actually capable of out resolving the 24 megapixel sensor quite considerably because putting it on the higher resolution camera definitely was able to capture more image data out of the back of that lens. Now we can even step things up further and jump up to a 4x5 shot. So on the left we have our Nikon scan again, on the right we have our 16 shot downscaled. Uh, we can see if we zoom in that the one on the left is over sharpened for a start because the grain is starting to get quite aggressive. This was shot on Delta 100 by the way. And the one on the right has a much finer grain overall, even though the scan is of a higher resolution. Now you might think that the one on the left is much sharper and technically it is a sharper image because I've turned up the actual post-processing sharpening quite considerably. But if you actually look at it, the one on the right has all of the same amount of detail. And this is very important to understand because there is a difference between detail and sharpness. Philip Bloom has an excellent video on this which compares the two, so you do need to understand that. But you can see all around this piece here, the same amount of detail is being captured on both. So if you take a look at these plants here, you can see that the pixel shift scan is much better defined and you can see all the different parts. Meanwhile, the Nikon scan is just sort of a blotchy mess. Even up here in these plants here, it's sort of weird and blotchy and here on the pixel shift scan, it's just really nice and crisp and well-defined. So to wrap all this up, uh, it definitely seems that the higher resolution pixel shift scan is a much better option for scanning film. It gives you a better grain rendering on black and white. It removes the bare filter interpolation issues as well as the grain aliasing issue. And on color film, it gives you a much better rendering of detail in the frame and of grain as well. It also, and this is very anecdotally because there's no way to test this, but when I was inverting the scans using Negative Lab Pro, the pixel shift scans almost always inverted perfectly, while occasionally the non-pixel shifted scan would invert a little bit differently or would have a slightly different color profile to it. And I'm actually going to say that the pixel shift with the extra color resolution, I think might be helping here. And the reason for that is when you're doing an inversion, it's quite an intensive mathematical operation to invert the values of every pixel. So if you have a, like, let's say a blue value, which is you know, blue 65, but the interpolated value from the bare demosaicing is blue 72. Now our eyes might not be able to tell the difference between those two shades of blue, but Negative Lab Pro definitely can because it's a piece of computer software. It's going to recognize any difference in the data. So when it does the inversion, it might be messing up the calculations. Now, I can't confirm this for sure, but it does appear anecdotally to be the case. So, in, so I'm gonna add that to the list of benefits. So if you have a pixel shift capable camera, you should absolutely be using it in its highest resolution mode to scan your film. Now dealing with the giant file sizes can be an absolute pain in the butt. So what I would advise you do is to export the files from the pixel shifting software or whatever software you're using to combine the images, export them as TIFF files, and then use a script like ImageMagick to downgrade the resolution quite considerably. Because let's be honest, 
no 35 millimeter frame is giving you 240 megapixels of resolution so you might as well take that much larger scan size and compress it down to maybe you know, 24 if you want or maybe 30 megapixels to give you some cropping room as well now when it comes to medium format scanning you know for 6.6 i tend to leave the shots uh, somewhere around 70 to 80 megapixels for 6.9 it's 120 and then for 4x5 i just let the resolution go as high as i can but just before we finish up i do want to state that i am absolutely splitting hairs here in terms of scan quality if you're posting this stuff to the web or to instagram it's going to be fine with the normal dslr scan it really doesn't matter that much i'm just being very very technical and very very picky but also the fact that scanning film is such a pain in the rear to do i'd much rather put in the effort and get a really high quality scan to begin with and then from that i can you know compress away information or process it how, how much i like and with that see you next time